All right, so today we're going to be taking a look at the One Man Gurkha Army, also known as Sergeant de Prasad Poon. I hope I'm saying that right. If I'm wrong and, and I'm butchering it, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, by Liveth Forevermore. As always, I'm going to be leaving a link to the original video and channel down in the description below, so go ahead and make sure that you check them out. So recently, on a Gurkha re reaction video that I did a little while back that was kind of going through the actual selection process and how everything goes, and we saw that they were pretty strict in the process, right? I mean, it was a full pat down physically. And also, I, 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 don't, I don't remember the race or like the thing they had to do where they had the uh, basket on their back and actually had like, uh, it was it like a rope or a padding that they would put on their forehead, right? To kind of, I, I, I think it was to keep like the, uh, uh, the rocks that they were carrying, you know, from like, sagging them back uh, it's been a while since i did that video but i just recently started to get a lot of comments like saying hey you gotta check out this sergeant de prasad poon guy and um, the only thing i knew about him as far as from what people were commenting was that he held off a pretty sizable taliban force all by himself now i don't know how long he did this for i don't even know how much um taliban were there and don't even know what kind of his story is but a lot of people were commenting about it so i figured i'd check it out so without talking too much more, let's go ahead and get to the actual video. But before we do, don't forget to like, subscribe. It really does help me a lot. Hit that notification bell so you get notified every time I do upload. I finally got the little animation that I'm putting like right here. So I'm getting a little more professional. <laughs> um, but in any case, let's go ahead and see what Sergeant De Prasad Poon is all about. On the 17th of September 2010, a platoon from the 1st Battalion, the Royal Gurkha Rifles, was stationed at two patrol bases near the village of Rahim Kalei in the north of Helmand Province. At some point during the day, the bulk of the platoon departed the bases to secure a key road to the east, with two small detachments remaining behind to garrison the outposts. Tasked with holding the southernmost patrol base were four Gurkhas, among them Sergeant Dibrasad Poon who, in the evening of the 17th, was on sentry duty on the roof of a two-story compound that was at the center of the base. I kind of got his name right. He, he, he said it almost exactly the same as me. Man in his post for several hours, Sergeant Pun soon began to hear some noises materializing from the other side of the main gate, and, as he later recalled, I thought at first maybe it was a cow, but my suspicions soon built up, and I saw two Taliban digging to lay down an IED in front of our gate. Immediately, the sergeant called out for the two men to identify themselves, but instead of receiving a verbal response, bullets and RPGs began to hit the patrol bays, as a significantly larger Taliban force appeared from out of the darkness. Realising the outpost was under attack, Sergeant Pun grabbed a nearby radio and informed his platoon commander of the unfolding situation, before turning his attention onto the enemy. That's pretty good. I mean, we, I mean, just like a little quick side story, um, when I was in Syria, right, and we were on post, and we were on one of the farther posts, and then we had an um, RSOG um, coming by, and they were trying to run like a little mini drill, right? And he says that, hey, you guys are taking contact. There's a squad size element about what, like, I think he said it was like around 300 meters or 200 meters, so pretty decently close, right? And one of the big things was like, hey, what do you do? What do you do? And I'm thinking, shit. I'm going to have, because from what I remember is that they said that we took an RPG and it didn't hit us, but it scraped along the side of the post and some um, fucking uh, splinters went in my buddy's face. And so I'm perfectly fine, but he's on the, supposed to be on the ground and that his face is supposed to be like jacked up, right? So he says, what's the first thing you do? And for me personally, I mean, I, I didn't expect that to happen. Obviously, you know, you, you want to be prepared at all times. At first... I shot back for like a second or two. After that, I went straight for the radio because after shooting for like about a second or two, notionally, of course, right? So I'm just, I mean, obviously I'm not just shooting, but notionally, um, I'm supposed to be shooting. But then I realized, oh shit, what if I can't get them? And they have someone like flanking on one of the sides and I'm the only one that knows. Uh, other people might be hearing gunshots and 
they might not know like exactly the situation, but they might know. They're obviously going to know that hey, shit's going down over by uh, B- BP10. Now, as soon as about one or two seconds, I got on the radio. And I told them, "Hey, uh, we have a squad size element, three zero zero meters, closing in." And then it was it's like a couple more seconds after that, my uh, the person who was doing who was insinuating the drill started saying. Because I went back to straight shooting, right? Because I figured that my buddy has uh, splinters in his face. He's not going to die, as far as I was concerned, right? It's going to be painful as shit, right? But, like, he can pull them out. He might be a little shocked still. And then, so I'm going back to notionally shooting. And then this lieutenant just keeps saying, why didn't you have a non-line for your buddy? And I was like, okay, I'm fully aware that I, I let, um, or fuck it, was it the B-Doc? No. Hey, taking contact here's the kind of situation so cure F, more likely they're not going to be on the way you're going to have a um our fuck what were they called oda coming in as well so my main concern right now is just keeping as many of them the notional enemy at bay as i possibly can but this guy's saying well why aren't you calling an an, an online it's like because he's not necessarily fucked up the way they were describing that he was and i was just like Hey, it's gonna hurt. So I'm just gonna keep shooting, try to keep their heads down, and then as soon as everyone else starts showing up, then I'll address them, right? But apparently I, I was wrong. I mean, I don't know. I've honestly never been in a situation like um, Sergeant Poon here has. Obviously, his situation is a little more dire because from it, from what it seems, it seems like he's kind of by himself at this point. And there's a Taliban force that was even bigger than uh, the guys who were trying to plant the IED. So. Definitely a lot different in his situation, but like that's one of the situations as well. Like, what's what are you gonna do? So, am I? And obviously, I'm not trying to act like I'm some like, <laughs> you, you know what I mean. But I fact, I like the fact that the the way he just he went straight to the radio. Hey, let them know what's going on. It's great because now, it, even if he were to um, die, at least everyone knows they hate they're being attacked and they're gonna rush into that area, right? But let me know down in the comments if you think I was in the wrong in my situation. I mean, I, I could I, I could have been, um, according to the lieutenant I was. But, you know, I guess it just depends on what the situation is. As soon as I knew they were Taliban, I thought I was going to die. But as soon as I started firing, that feeling went away. I knew I had to do something before they killed me and my three comrades. I thought, before they kill me, I have to kill some of them. Picking up his SAAT, the Gurkha fired off a rifle grenade at the attacking enemy, prior to detaching a nearby general purpose machine gun from its tripod and returning fire on the advancing Taliban fighters, who were moving forward from three directions. Within minutes, however, he had spent all of his machine gun ammunition and so resorted to using a mix of grenades to disrupt the attack, including six phosphorus, six fragmentation and four rifle grenades. Once these two had become expended, he picked up his SAAT again and, moving from position to position, he continued to engage the enemy, some of whom managed to break through his line of sight and reach the compound. Looking for a way to get onto the roof, some of the insurgents began scaling up the building's mud walls, with one fighter reaching the top first and proceeding to rush the Gurkha. Training his SAAT onto the enemy fighter, Sergeant Pun shot and killed the insurgent seconds before experiencing a weapon malfunction, just as another Taliban fighter appeared on the roof. Ditching his rifle, the sergeant grabbed the nearby GPMG tripod and held it at the second insurgent, knocking him unconscious. Dude, it's it's just crazy to think how, in a situation like this, and he's able to really keep us cool, right? I mean, obviously, I, again, I can't really speak from that because, honestly, I've said it many times I do not have combat experience, and I can say, like, hey, I would be exactly the same, like, I'd be calm, cool-headed, everything, I'd do everything right. It's like, uh, I, I, I can say that, but I never know how, many, how I'm going to actually react unless I'm in that situation, right? So, it's just, it's crazy how he's, he's able to stay, I mean, he could be, he Obviously, there's always a chance, like, hey, you could be scared, but that's like, hey, that's really like heightening your senses and all that. But from what I'm hearing right now, this guy is just on it right now. It, it really doesn't look like he's scared at all. So I think that's pretty badass. 
Moments after, Sergeant Pun heard several more of the enemy attempting to climb up to the roof, who he pushed back by dropping a sandbag onto one and forcing the others to retreat when a claymore mine detonated. Eventually, after 17 minutes of heavy fighting, the enemy attack had collapsed and what was left of the Taliban force withdrew back in the direction they had come from. A short while later, British reinforcements arrived at the patrol base to strengthen its defences, where they found an exhausted Sergeant Diprasad Pun still on the roof. Sergeant Pun later stated, Wait, 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 before he gets into what he said, 17 minutes might not seem a lot to m most people, but in a situation like this, right, or like in any type of situation where like, say, for example, your life is on the line, I can imagine that those 17 minutes probably felt way longer to him, right, than what you would normally think. I thought there might have been around 20 to 30 Taliban fighters involved in the attack, but later locals told me it was probably around 15. I know I'm very lucky to be alive. I didn't think the attack would ever end, and I nearly collapsed when it was over. I did what I was trained to do. There wasn't any choice but to fight. All right, let's go ahead and talk about that for a minute. Now, dude, the amount of badassery that this guy can really exude. I mean, when people were telling me um, in the other um, Gurkha selection process vi uh, video reaction that I did a little while back was that the Gurkhas are some of the most worst people that you want to face in the battlefield, right? So you you essentially don't want a Gurkha to, to be your enemy, right? But they're some of the most polite, generous, like great people that you can meet if you meet them like say just like meeting up for like a coffee or something right super polite super friendly and um just that last part where it, where it says wait ah let me see real quick better to die than to be a coward i've never heard their motto before but that's a pretty fucking badass one right and also i feel like this story alone right and like i said that 17 minutes might not feel like a lot to a lot of people, but I feel like this could be a movie, right? Like just a story in general, it's a true story and you wouldn't even have to um, try to like make it like, say like the movies you would see where there's just fire, fucking explosions and all that, essentially Michael Bay-esque type movie. But if you literally just kind of reshow exactly what he did and all that, it's gonna be badass. I mean, using a sandbag, to essentially knock someone off was it a ladder that said or like to ju just threw a sandbag on the dude causing him to fall over also kind of going through the video again where they were outlining all the stuff i was like 250 rounds from the gpmg i was like okay cool 180 rounds from the sa80 okay cool and i was like 17 grenades holy shit and I was like, okay yeah okay and i heard a claymore and then the sandbag was like whoa crazy this is fucking crazy man and then I just saw that it says an MG tripod, like the actual tripod itself, right? Fucking, <laughs> I completely missed that the first time around. But holy shit, I think that's even better than um, like an E-tool. I mean, I, I don't know if it would be better than the E-tool. I mean, but it, it's at least in that same level, right? Essentially, using an unconventional thing that isn't necessarily supposed to be a weapon, but can still be used as one. So, honestly, man, this is just one of those guys that I'm surprised I never heard about. Because, I mean, you hear about a whole bunch of other people and just doing incredible things, especially in the military. I mean, Dakota Myers, Chris Kyle, obviously some of the more famous ones. Um, was it, got Hathcock from the Marines, you know, the, which, by the way, I should probably look at a video because I haven't seen, like, a video this, uh, specifically on him, right? But, but obviously, the, this is the guy that crawled ah, shit, i forgot the distance he crawled but he crawled for several days just to take one shot 
and then slowly crawled back to the point where even the wildlife didn't even know he, he was really there. And, but yeah, man, Sergeant de Prasad Poon, fucking savage. <laughs> Animal, bro. Dude, a man's type of man, essentially. But that's gonna go ahead and do it for this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, it really does help me a lot. Hit that dislike button if you didn't like it, it really does help me improve the channel. And leave me a little comment to let me know what it was. Lip smacking, hair throwing, whatever it was. But until then, I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.